Vaccine-associated cancer in cats. What is it, what causes it, and what you can do to prevent it. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's video, I'm trying to feature my new cat, Murray. So we're gonna hike on upstairs, I'm gonna find him see if I can coerce him into being part of the video and we're gonna get right into this pretty serious topic. Murray likes hanging out upstairs, so that's where I'm going. So Murray is hanging out in here in our sketchy laundry room, but he's pretty happy. He actually loves to sleep on top of this suitcase. Hi Murray. He has a great view. He also is very close to his food and He's up high. Kind of like the ideal three things you'd want to look for if you're a cat. Vaccine-associated sarcoma or fibrosarcoma. It's one of those really serious types of cancers that's really only seen in cats. We don't see it in dogs. And we know that it's most correlated with vaccines. So what it is, is this very aggressive, um, can be very fast-growing, um, and difficult to treat type of cancer that most commonly occurs in between our cat's shoulder blades. So if I'm showing you Murray here, I'm gonna try to not move him because it's a bit easier. Let's just, RD Murray, we're just gonna do a bit of a close up. So up in here, in between the shoulder blades, where commonly most of the vaccines are given. Um, for any of you guys have had your cats or your dogs vaccinated, most of the time, you know, it's this flap the skin up in between the shoulder blades. It's easiest to get to. There's a number of specific things that are known about this type of cancer um, that show this direct correlation with vaccines. So to begin with, in areas where rabies vaccine becomes mandatory, and often the veterinarians are giving it, you know, up in here between the shoulder blades, um, there's an increase in these types of cancers or fibrosarcoma. Um, secondly, when we look at areas of the U.S. where rabies vaccine does not have to be given, such as the state of Hawaii, they have a much lower incidence of fibrosarcoma. We know it's a very rare type of cancer, but the, the range varies in terms of some studies are saying it can occur as often as one in a thousand cats to one in 10,000 cats. And, but you know, every veterinarian has seen cases of this, unfortunately, pretty untreatable type of cancer. It's also called injection-associated um, type cancer, so it's not just the vaccines that can cause it, um, but it seems to be that the vaccines are the ones that are most likely to cause it. And when cancer is associated with these vaccines, it's the most difficult one to treat. It can be the most malignant and the most challenging to actually um, help your cat with. What's happening is the vaccine is given, there's this local chronic inflammation in the area of the vaccine, um, that local inflammation can affect some of the cells in that area, during the fibrous tissue type cells, and you know, they can go from precancerous to cancerous, um, producing that cancer fibrosarcoma. The general thought is that the vaccines most at risk are ones that are called that are using adjuvants. And an adjuvant is a, some type of compound that's added into the vaccine to boost the immune response to it. So generally these are vaccines are called kill vaccines. So there's no, for instance, we're not giving any portion of live virus of rabies or live virus of feline leukemia. Um, so it's called a kill vaccine. And then something else is added into the vaccine to sort of trick the immune system to respond appropriately and produce this you know, big immune response. The problem here though, what's happening is that, you know, when you can get this ongoing localized inflammatory response at the site of the injection or the vaccine, then it can cause the cells to change, um, turning them uh, in, 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 in turn, um, creating fibrosarcoma. So the time between the vaccine and then when you're gonna see a cancer can be as short as a few months. It can be as long as 10 years. And they say on average from the vaccine until the cancer shows up, can be about four years. So you really need to be aware of lumps that form after a vaccine or any injection that's given to your cat. So in general, you know, if Murray was given this vaccine under here between his shoulder blades, if a lump showed up in two to three weeks, I wouldn't tell you to worry too much about it. I would say to monitor it. But if that m lump is still present in three months, then you need to be really concerned and be discussing this with, with your veterinarian.
the general thought now that if that lump is present three months later, it should be removed and then be biopsied. If the lump is greater than two centimeters, it's about that far, about one inch in diameter, and then the general veterinary rule is just take it out because that's a much bigger indicator or likelihood um, that it is fibrosarcoma. And then the last big thing to remember that if you know, you're monitoring a lump and within a month it start, you know, it's starting to grow, it's gone from being you know, less than a centimeter in diameter to all of a sudden it's just doubled, then that's a, another real big red flag. And once again, then it should be removed and should be biopsied. So what can you do about this in the first place? You know, should you be vaccinating your cat? Are there things you shouldn't be giving your cat? For sure, you know, there's some real big common sense principles that I see. And, if, and as far as Murray goes, he's not going to get any additional vaccines. Like, that's it. He's an eight-year-old cat. I live in an area where rabies isn't endemic. I don't think there's been a case of rabies diagnosed in our area, at least not while I've lived in, in Nelson. So, so I know he doesn't need to have rabies vaccine. He's been vaccinated as a kitten. I'm not concerned at all about any other additional cat diseases that are floating around. Um, he is not at risk. He won't get any further vaccine. So obviously that's the single biggest thing, right? If you can avoid giving your cat injections in that area, and in particular, these adjuvanted vaccines, I mean, that's more than anything else, that's going to go the biggest way in terms of lowering the risk of developing fibrosarcoma. A couple of other thoughts around the vaccine. So first of all, my thought is if you have a kitten, yes, they should still be vaccinated for the FVRCP. These are, this is feline panleukopenia or, or feline distemper, um, plus the two respiratory viruses, feline viral rhinotrachitis and Khaleesi virus. So that would be a vaccine at eight weeks, a booster followed up at 12 weeks. If you're going to give your cat the vaccines, doing that low down, if you're going to do the FERCP, they're suggesting low down on the right limb and or the base of your cat's tail in here. I don't know how well that would go on Murray, but the point being that if uh, this fibrosarcoma or this type of cancer develops after vaccines, then you know if it's on the leg, you need to amputate your cat's limb. If it's on the tail, all you need to do would be able to remove the tail. My thought would be if I were to have a kitten, I would try to do the tail vaccines if possible. I mean, the hard thing is it's up to a mil, so it's a fairly big volume. There's not a lot of space there at the base of your cat's tail, um, so it could be difficult, but that would be ideal. If you live in an area where state laws are mandating you have rabies vaccine, then it would be better if you get a recombinant DNA type vaccine. So theirs are ones which seem to have a much better immune response without having the adjuvants that are more likely to cause fibrosarcoma. Then if you're needing to give vaccines, have your veterinarian and you use live virus vaccines whenever possible. So my big thing for you guys, or the big takeaway message here, is one, yes, there are risks to vaccines. Two, just be really thoughtful about what vaccines are necessary to be given to your cat. So have this really serious discussion with your veterinarian. Do your own research, you know, see what's, you know, what diseases are in your area. My general thought is I, I don't see the necessity for feline leukemia vaccine unless it so be that you are you live in a multi-cat household, your cat's at risk of feline leukemia. I don't see the effect of it or benefit of that. I see the risk of fibrosarcoma. Um, as far as rabies vaccines goes, I mean, if you're, you have an outdoor cat, you're in an endemic rabies area or it's required by law, so be it, have the rabies vaccine. Um, but if you're not in an endemic area where I live, then, you know, there's no need. It's up to you to make that decision, and I'm sure not going to give my cat rabies vaccine. One of the big things about this, this type of cancer is it's so difficult to treat. And in veterinary practice, I did see more than a few cats that had fibrosarcoma. Um, it's this very aggressive, rapidly growing tumor, you know, and it spreads out these big, long tentacles, making it really difficult to get a big, wide margin and fully remove it. And so it, it means a combination of, you know, a big aggressive surgery of, you know, some of these cases, you know, amputation if it's on the leg. Third, follow-up with radiation therapy. And even then, you're not looking at a great prognosis. So it's one of those big tumors you never want to diagnose, you never really want, you never want your cat to have. And third, do whatever you can to prevent it. You know, being, being really cautious of vaccines and any other injections your cat is going to ever get. So thanks you guys for watching this edition of Energy Secrets. If you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe to my channel.
click down there to like this video. And lastly, click that link directly in the box below. And then when you do that, and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free books and my free videos and how to heal your cats at home with my top natural remedy.